Welcome back to the Data Digest. In this tutorial, I will show you how to draw multiple lines in R with the GeomLine and the ggparkcoort function. When you have to draw multiple lines, it can be useful to color them individually or based on some group variable. It can also be used to highlight individual lines within a group of many others. And there's a function specifically designed for parallel plots and we will go through the function arguments of the ggparkcoort function in the second half of this video. Let's get started with the R code. The first thing I want to show you is how to color lines based on a certain group variable. For example, blood pressure over 10 days, giving the treatment being a drug or a placebo. So imagine you have an Excel file with 10 individuals and a treatment column with five individuals getting the drug and five the placebo, and then their blood pressure over 10 days. You can read that in with the read Excel function. And with dim blood pressure, you can see that you have 10 rows and 12 columns. STR gives you the structure of your data frame, in this case it's a table with characters and numbers. And if you use the view function, you can see your data is there. Now the first thing I want to do is turn this white data frame into a long one with a new variable for day, because that's what you need for the ggplot function to work properly, a long data frame. And with pivot longer, you can accomplish that. In calls, you can specify that the first column and the second column for individual and treatment should not be interfered with but then all the day columns should be combined and collected and stacked under one another with a new column name being day and then the values being stored in the blood pressure column BP so it will extract the column information and collect the values for blood pressure. So this is what you get if you run these lines of code. For individual A who received the drug treatment, you now not have 10 columns for day 1 to 10, but one column that extracted the day information with the corresponding blood pressure values, and then it repeats for 90 more rows for individual B, C, D, etc. And if you add the mutate function to pass number for days, you can add another column called day number where it will extract the number of the day character. Now if you try to plot this and pipe the data into the ggplot function with day number on the x-axis and the bp plot pressure value on the y-axis, you get a weird looking line because there's one very important argument missing. You have to specify within the aesthetics mapping of ggplot that there is a grouping going on in the background, in this case that it's supposed to be based on the individuals, because then geomline will create one line for each individual based on the individual columns of the BP long data frame. If you change the group variable to treatment, then you would expect getting two lines because there's only drug and placebo. And this is what you would get if you change it to treatment. Now it's a bit difficult to see, but if you add color for treatment as well, then you could see now it grouped it based on the treatment column and created two lines. But that's not what we wanted. So now what we can do is group and color based on individual. Once you specify that you want a different color for each individual, A to J, you won't need the grouping variable anymore because then that's a given. However, if we want to color it based on the treatment, we would need the grouping variable again for individual. Because if you just give it color for treatment, it will create just two groups. But if we specify the group variable as individual, you now get 10 individual lines, but the coloring is based on the treatment. And now you can make this look a bit more professional by adding a vertical line with the geom vline function using line type dashed and adding a geom label at a specific position to highlight that there was a treatment at day five before you collected the blood pressure of 10 individuals for five days. And then after the treatment, you could see that the drug lowered the blood pressure and the placebo did not. Next, I want to show you how to highlight a single country in the Gapminder dataset. The Gapminder dataset contains 142 countries and 12 different years for each of them with data on life expectancy, population and GDP per capita. If you want to plot the change of life expectancy from 1957 to 2007, you would pipe the dataset into ggplot and in the aesthetics mapping put year on the x-axis, life expectancy on the y-axis and use country for the group variable. Then you add geomline and you can change the background theme. 
Now, if you want to highlight an individual country, what you can do is simply add a second geomline function where you specify the data as being the gapminder data filtered for the specific country of interest. Then you can set the color to red to see how China did over these 50 years. Change it to Thailand and the color to orange and you get the line here. But there's a better way to do that. A way that's more automated and can be used for four different continents at the same time. The first thing I did here is filtering out Oceania, so I get a 2x2 two two matrix of the remaining four continents, and then I kept everything as is, but I added a facet wrap function till the continent to separate the countries by their continent and only have lines of European countries in the Europe facet. With labs you can always give specific X and Y labels and add a subtitle. Now similar to the example before, I create a subset data frame where I filter the gapminder data set based on a certain list of countries that I chose. And now in order to not repeat lines of codes all the time, you can store this object in plot1 and now simply add to plot1 another geom line where you specify the data to be the subset data frame. You can increase the size to make the line stand out more. And now you can give a color to country only for those countries countries that are in the subset data frame. And those are the countries specified here. So the subset data frame is a lot shorter than the gapminder data frame and you can map one different color to each of these countries. Now there's one more thing I want to do. I want to put country label directly next to the line. For that I use the geom text function where I filter the subset data frame for the year 2007 which will be the x coordinate. So now I can keep year x and have y for life expectancy and the label will be the country name. So now you can see that it puts the country names next to the line but you cannot really read them yet because for that we would have to increase the x-axis range above 2007 and you can use the scale x continuous function to set the limits. So now the range goes to 2015 and the names start to appear. One more thing would be to set the breaks specifically for the years we have from the gapminder data set. Otherwise it will just create these ranges automatically in steps of 20 years here for example. And then with theme legend position equals none we can gain some space by removing the legends because now we have the label next to the line anyway. And that's how it looks and if you zoom in or export it as a PDF you get these charts where you can read the name directly next to the line. Now I want to mention that there is an article from storytellingwithdata.com that argues for reasons to avoid spaghetti graphs and gives alternatives, some of them we already started to use, like separating the lines spatially, what we did with facet wrap, and then also emphasizing one line at a time, which we did with coloring. And I want to give one more example where we pick eight or nine countries from Africa, but only want to show the gray background lines for the other nine countries and not all African countries. So I won't go into details, but I want to keep the code here for you to know about the options. So if you run these lines of codes with set seed 2022, you will get the exact same results where I sample eight countries from Africa randomly. But the problem is now I don't want to show all of the other African countries and I don't want to show them specifically in a separate facet. So now the code on the left shows you how you can actually plot nine countries at a time, getting rid of the NA box and you can copy that. But now I want to filter out all the countries that are not one of the nine here. And as I said, I won't go into details, but I created a vector of nine African countries up here and that I used to filter, but also created a second column called country two, which I used for the original line as the background color in gray, but then also added a new line afterwards with a specific color for each country that is then plotted during the facet wrap splits. So now you only see the nine lines repeated in gray in the background for these nine countries and it's highlighting one at a time. Now you can really see how, how Mali developed in contrast to the other eight countries over those 50 years. And it's a really clean and useful visualization to highlight an individual country. Let us now move on to the ggpar coort function from the ggle package. It allows you to easily create line charts for a given data set where you only have to specify the variables of interest and the grouping column. Just as a reminder, the iris data set shows you the petal width and length and the sepal width and length of three different iris flowers. And if you limit the iris data set to the row 1, 51 and 101, which is the first individual from each species, 
species, you will only get three lines and their scaled measurements for these four different columns. And it looks like Setosa has the smallest pedal length and width and Virginica the biggest values. And the ggpark coord function makes it really easy to create parallel charts to investigate how different the species are for certain measurements and variables. And it also allows you to follow one individual throughout the different measurements. One thing that's always useful when you deal with a new and complex function is to use the question mark or the help function on that function to get more information. And you can either look at it in the help tab of the RStudio software or open it in a separate window. And then it starts with the default options of each function argument. And then you get an explanation of the different function arguments. And I will show you some of them in the next minutes. And then you get even more details, for example, what different options you have for the scaling argument or how to deal with missing values should you exclude the entire case or set the missing value to the average or a random value, how to use the order function argument and then it often finished with examples that you can just put in and look at the results. So when you look at the iris data set you see that there are four columns that hold measurements of the different dimensions of these flower leaves and the fifth column holds the species information. So if you set data to iris you have to specify the measurement columns one to four and the grouping column in this example five for the species and then you can give it a title and show points as false and alpha lines is set to one but if you change that to true you can now see the individual points of the measurements and the alpha lines point four make it a little bit more transparent if you don't specify the order it will just take it from the columns as they are provided but you can rearrange them any way you want so if you want sepal widths to come first you say that the second column should start and then you get it over here but instead of using the original column order it is helpful to use any or all class because then it will reorder the variables based on their maximum differences so it will start with the column where the measurements are most similar within each group and the most distance between the groups so here it has the most order you can almost differentiate the three species perfectly on the petal length variable but then as you go on to the right you can see that the measurements overlap a lot more and it becomes more and more fuzzy and if you reorder by skewness it's the other way around and it will start with the most skewed variables first and as i mentioned before you can look up the definitions of these function arguments within the help tab let us now move on to the scaling function argument if you set it to global min max it reflects no scaling at all so the pedal length ranges from 0.1 values to 4 and 5 and 6 and higher values so if you don't apply a scaling you get the exact same numbers in your parallel line plot and now you can see that when the values are very different from one another it makes sense to center them scale them so to speak based on some kind of algorithm to make the differences stand out a bit better and also judge how big the overlap and the variation within one variable actually is. The different scaling options are again explained in the help tab, but in case you forget about them or you want to set it to false, for example, you will get an error message that says that it's not a valid argument for scale and that you have to choose from one of these six and now I just want to simply click through them. The Unimax scaling will simply put the lowest value of each variable to zero and the highest one to one and everything else is scaled proportionally in between. Then you can have robust scaling where you subtract the median and divide by the median absolute deviation. STD is the standard scaling where you subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation and with scale equals center you would be able to use the scale summary function argument where you standardize according According to the unimax but then add a specific value to center it by afterwards for example median or mean and if you use center ops another function argument becomes available where you can center all row values from the different individuals based on a row number that you specify by default it's the first one now by default the spline factor is false but if you set it to true you get some curvature in between the different measurements and it's not straight lines anymore that connect one variable to the next when you set box plot to true you get a box plot for the variable as a whole regardless whether you specify a group column or not and with the shade box you simply get a rectangle area that covers the range of the different values if you want to highlight one species only you can use the scale color manual function and give the first two species the same hex code for gray but then for the third species you use a different color and it will take over these manually set colors this way you can override the color scheme that you get by default if you just run 
the first lines of this code. Could be a nice visual effect to have one species stand out from the others. If you're used to using the math library, there's also a par coord function that existed outside of the ggplot infrastructure. And I can highly recommend the rgraph gallery website to look into examples of that. It has most of the function arguments as the gg version, and it takes you through different examples of what I just showed you. I hope you found this video helpful and that you will use these functions for your own analysis and visualizations. Until next time, here at the Data Digest.